In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the five number summary to construct a box plot, or also known as a box and whisker plot. So recall in the last lesson, we used the same data set that I have up here that's identified. Uh, we calculated the minimum value of 36, the first quartile of 39, the median of 44, the third quartile of 45, and the maximum value of 69. So we're going to use those five numbers in order to construct the box plot. And I'm going to start off with the minimum and the maximum values. So the minimum value, I'm going to represent that with a short vertical tick mark right here. I'll label it minimum is equal to 36. And then I'm going to use a short vertical tick mark for the maximum value, which happens to be 69. And then next, I'm going to move into the quartile. So I'm working from the outside to the inside. And so for the first quartile, that's going to have a longer vertical line at approximately 39. So I'm going to say that's about right here. This is Q1, and that equals 39. And then our third quartile is 45. So that'll have a vertical line the same length as Q1. And so this is going to be Q3, and that's equal to 45. And so the Q1 and the Q3, those make up the edges of the box. And then from the minimum value to Q1, that makes up the whisker of the box and whisker plot. And then from Q3 to the maximum value, that makes up the upper whisker of the box and whisker plot. And then the last thing that we want to place in this box and whisker plot is the median value. And that's going to be approximately right here. And our median value is equal to 44. So there's our box and whisker plot there. So the really cool thing is it allows us to visualize the five number summary and the distribution of these quartiles in a graphical representation. If we just look at it in the data set where we're looking at the numbers right over here, it almost appears that this data is nice and evenly distributed. But when we put it in a graphic with the box plot, we can see that the data isn't necessarily equally distributed. There's a few things I want to point out in the box plot that we can see in here. Number one, between the minimum and Q1, that represents the lower 25% of the data. Between Q1 and the median, that's 25% of the data. In between the median and Q3, that's 25% of the data. Really, within this box, that represents 50% of the data. Below Q3, that represents 75% of the data. And above Q3, that represents the upper 25% of the data. Now, there's a few things that I like to look for when I look at the box plot, and one of those happens to be symmetry. I want this to be nice and symmetrical. So if you're a Star Wars fan, think TIE Fighter, okay? We would really love to see this median value right in the middle of the box. We'd like to see the whiskers um, be the e equal lengths on both sides, but we don't have that. So you, we can see that this value of 69 is a significant distance away from all of these other points. Remember, 75% of the data is at Q3 or below. So when we have that kind of, um, kind of skewness to this, it's a right skew distribution, but that also indicates that that could potentially be an outlier, which we'll get to a little bit later. Now there's a couple other measurements that I think are really cool that we can see in here. One of those measurements happens to be the range, which we've talked about before. If you recall, the range is the distance between the minimum value and the maximum value. So if we start right here and we go all the way to the value of 69, which is approximately right there, this is our range right here. So that's our range. And that equals 69 minus 36, which is going to be 33. So that range is 33. So we can see that measure of variability in terms of the range. And there's a new measure of variability that we haven't talked about yet. It's called the interquartile range. So I'll write that down over here. It is the IQR or interquartile range. And this is simply equal to Q3 minus Q1. So really that's the width of the box. And in this case right here, if we wanted to calculate this, this would be 39, actually I'm sorry, not 39, 45 minus 39, which gives us an IQR of six. So that measures how wide the box is in terms of that IQR. So if we look at this, our box is about that length right there. That's our IQR and that's equal to six. Now, if you have a skew distribution or outliers, the IQR is a great measure of variability because the IQR is not necessarily influenced by outliers. Typically, we're not taking data sets of just four points where we could have the 
quartiles influenced by outliers. Typically, we're taking a much larger data set than that. So generally, the IQR isn't influenced by outliers. And then the range is another great measure of variability when we have skew or non-symmetric data as well uh, when we're looking at that. So this gives you a little bit of information about the box plots. In a little while, we'll talk about um, outliers and learn a little bit about outliers in terms of our box plots.